interviews in Finland. This time I'm going to show you a Russian man living in Finland uh, who talks about uh, different topics concerning Russia, Ukraine and the European Union as well. I like this interview because the guy doesn't seem to be brainwashed by Russian propaganda and has a first-hand experience on color revolutions, so-called. The guy didn't want to be filmed, so you will only hear his voice. About the situation in Crimea, how do you feel about that? And if you had the power to do so, how would you solve the situation? Well, in my perspective, Crimea should remain with uh, Ukraine, but, um, well, there is always that. You see, this country's um, former Soviet Union uh, republics like Ukraine or Lithuania, Latvia, Estonia, you know, these countries, are sh they, they should stay uh, independent from any um, military union or political union as such uh, in terms of being a sharing buffer between two worlds, the, U the, the West and Russia. So it's kind of green zone between those two powers. But since countries have started moving towards West, of course Russia has started doing some things in order to protect their interests in geopolitical area. So uh, that means that they didn't have any other choice but to take Crimea back to Russia. Since Russia was given as a gift by Khrushchev in the 1950s, so uh, they used that, and of course that uh, so-called <laughs> referendum. Uh, I do believe that people really wanted to move to Russia and become part of Russia, but uh, it's quite hard to say. Um, I would just keep it neutral. I would leave Ukraine, uh, Crimea to Ukraine in order uh, to keep the peace between those two countries, but with a few uh, buts, you know, so not going into NATO alliance or becoming some kind of against Russia uh, countries, you know, that's what it is. And if people in Crimea want to be part of Russia, you still wouldn't be happy of that to happen? Well, if, I mean, you, want, well, if you want to be part of Russia, just move to Russia. That's what it is. In, well, like, let's just... Um, well, again, it's just quite double standard world now. It's quite hard to say what to do about these people. Um, well, if we're talking about the United Kingdom, yes, they have given um, choice to Scotland to to hold the referendum uh, in order to show whether they stay they in, with England or to get out. So, yeah, and then, um, well, about Crimea, this sh well, it would be Ukraine that would give them a chance to, to vote, not Russia, you know. So if Ukraine would say, okay, no problem, guys, just do it and see what happens, whether you want to stay or whether you want to leave. That's what it is. It's not Russia the one who would decide their lives. And so I don't think it's fair, but... Uh, don't you think that if Russia hadn't acted in this way, Ukraine would have been turned like Donbass now? Uh, Maybe even more, actually, given the, like, the percentage of Russians living there. Yeah, well, I studied in Ukraine for a year, back in 2005, and there was uh, Orange Revolution, if you remember that. Um, you know what happened? I paid off my studies by going to shout at the square, Ukraine is my best country, I will not do something, you hold a flag there and they pay you 20 US dollars a night. If you go to fight, they pay you a hundred. So I don't really know who pays those things, you know. So I paid all my studies like that. I just worked like that. <laughs>
guys get to know, right? Yeah. Nobody knows that about like, and no one will tell ever about things like that from channels like BBC or RT. So, someone want that? Do you think that the European Union has acted, or and is acting like in the right way in this, or could it do something better to uh, make? Russia and Ukraine uh, talk to each other and like to find a solution that is acceptable by both. Wow, is the sanction strategy working or? Yeah, it's quite complicated since EU and the US both have quite a lot of interests in common. You could you could just see you know you could read between the lines that the US pressurizes the EU to make or to impose new sanctions against Russia. Uh, it is EU that loses a lot. You see what's happening in, in France? All these farmers coming into the bank profit. They, they have a lot of issues now. It's just because they don't export any goods to Russia anymore. The same things here in in Finland. If you want, to, I, I live in the center city, and I see all these farmers coming on their trucks to protest against these sanctions because of they they're losing money. They can't sell anything to Russia anymore, so it's quite a lot. They're suffering, and then they have to. And those sanctions will never work. And um, EU does not have too much options. Uh, if we're talking about international relations with the U.S., if they don't impose sanctions, no one will tell about things like that, you know? It's just, uh, if you would film me, my face, I wouldn't talk like that. Yeah, well, um, the EU uh, makes it uh, as easy as possible for them and for Russia. That's what I feel. German, uh, the Chancellor Merkel, she is quite good at this. Uh, she is trying to soften the relations between the UA, EU and Russia right now. So, yeah, that's what it is. And the um, Ukraine calls like the rebels in the east, the mass yeah. of terrorists. Do you think yeah. that's correct? Mm. Again, that's an, another double standard world. Um, let's just go back to Maidan, which is the, the square of independence in, in Kiev. What happens there? There are three legal ways to remove a president from his country. There's natural death, uh, election and impeachment, where the parliament votes to get out, you know. They didn't do about that, so they wanted to kill him at the end, so he had to flee, and during the night he was saved and he was, got, uh, they got him by helicopter and they took him to Russia, otherwise he was kind of captured in the circle. So, they took the power illegally. Is it democracy? Or liberalism? Or what's that? It looks like terrorism a bit. It was revolution. Um, all right. And the West said, all right, that's the, that's the stuff. That's the democracy we're talking about, man. Finally. Yes. There we go. I'm not pro-Western and I'm not pro-Russian. I don't really I like those two countries, even though I had a lot in common with those two countries. So, um, let's talk about the East, that what you're asking. There was absolutely everything fine until the new government in Kiev has shut down Russian television. They cancelled Russian as national language. And they said, the next year you guys are gonna study in schools in Ukrainian. 99% of that population don't speak any Ukrainian language. 
what do you expect from these people? Of course, they said, no, 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 no you can't cancel things like that. So you, we, we have to keep Russian. And they, of course, they started acting like rebels, like terrorists or whatever you call them. So again, that's another double standard world. So Russia calls them rebel people. They're trying to protect their rights. And the West calls them what? Terrorists. So what do you want? <laughs> yeah. Why are you here and why did you leave Russia? Uh, how do you feel about Finland and Russia? Would, do you ever think of going back or what's your future? Mm, mm -hmm. Well, uh, my wife and I are scientists. We are doing linguistics. So we don't really live in Russia, even though we are from Russia. So. We're doing a PhD here, uh, a doctoral dissertation. So um, I didn't really leave Russia because if I don't really want to leave there. So we just had to come here to study. But I don't really want to go back to Russia whilst the government like that is in power. I, I don't really feel they love my country. I love my country. I don't like Russia. But I do like my motherland. So um, once the power the power changes in, in in Kremlin, I'm gonna go back right away and then develop my country and, and help. So that's what it is. Power change, regardless of how it changes, or are you sure that the change will be for the better? I think so. I think so. Um, you see what happened there. I, I don't know where you're from, and I don't know how much you know about Russia and stuff. So, but the thing is, um, they, they made quite good propaganda within the country. They made people think that there is no other option for presidents but Putin. This is not really good. They they mean that we're all stupid. We're not good enough to be presidents or prime ministers or parliament people, you know, that's what it is, that's what they think. And, and, and people living there don't really think of that. They're just happy because of there is no war and they have something little that they need in their lives. So, either by force or, or you know, by democratic way uh, or other ways. I, I don't really care how power changes. You don't, you don't think that's uh, very dangerous, like if there was like a Maidan in, uh, uh, in it's Russia? It's not possible in Russia. You see what happened. Putin has given too much money to police and they're quite well fed. Okay. And uh, militaries as well. They, they, they're the best salaries in Russia right now. Other people don't really get to that much. And Moscow has a lot of money. Everyone who lives in Moscow has a lot of money and revolution starts where? In the capital, not in the village, you know, so they don't really gonna go against those things. They're quite well fed, so they made a nice thing not to remove themselves, you know. Uh, if Putin dies tomorrow and uh, like, I don't know, if Medvedev or who will take his place. Do you think that the president, like the, the government, will continue to have such high popular support as it has now? How much is it bound to the personality of Putin and how, like, to the system that he has created? Well, the system will die, certainly, right away if he goes. It's just not the best one. Well, Medvedev was easier to Russia, but that was, a, you know, Medvedev was never a president. He was just a Muppet show. Mm -hmm. Yep, 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 that's what it is. The president of Russia was always Putin since he came in 1998 or something. 16 years now he's in power, which is quite 
crazy. I don't know. I don't know. Well, anyway, good luck, man.